Once upon a time, in a world most unlike ours, a girl walked through a garden with no sight or scent of flowers. This place is rather mazish. I find myself disturbed. Like the English major saying, mazish is not a word. Cut me a break. I'm lost here, without a hope of... Wait, there, in the distance. I think I see a gate. Indeed, it was a gate she saw, both eerie and fantastic, with gothic carvings, iron spikes, gargoyle statues. Classic. I like how these statues look so mean, with frowns so set and hard. Yeah, except we are not stone. Yeah, we're the gately guards. I see. The girl apologized. I truly didn't know. Easy for you to say there, toots. Right then, off you go. But wait, I might need to get inside. What do you mean you might? I admit I am a little lost. And also not that bright. So could you tell me, smarty pants, which way you'd say is best? Depends on where you're going, east, south, north, or west. I want to get out of here, and I've no time for silly games. The guards looked sad and shook their heads. That truly is a shame. They then explained that they would help, but they had sworn a vow that one would lie and one would not. And they explained this how? Ahem. Anyway, the riddle was which one would guide her true. For one would say... Do not come in. And the other would say... Do. This really is a puzzle. Which way will my lady go? Not sure yet. I need to think and listen to my radio. Here's one for you, Kyle. Great. There once was a professional basketball player who was asked by a competition to make a basket in 10 minutes. He told them this was impossible. There was nothing in his way and he had everything he needed to accomplish the task at hand. Why would he be so sure he couldn't do it? That doesn't make any sense. You said he was a professional basketball player? Yup. I don't know. The hoop was too high? <laughs> nope. Ah. Is everything all right in here? Oh yeah, we're just having fun with this mind teaser book you gave me, Mr. Jacobs. So you're the one. <laughs> Not having as much fun as Joy is, Kyle? I was, about half an hour ago. Do you have any comic books coming in soon? Not today, I'm afraid. But I might be able to find an old crate of them in the attic if you'd like. That sounds good. Need help? I've got it. You two can keep having fun with the book of puzzles while I'm getting them. Hmm. Lots of fun. I sure will. Well, Kyle, do you know the answer? Hey, guys. What's going on? Oh, Artie, thank goodness. Save me, please. Uh, what's going on? Hey, Artie. Kyle and I are solving mind benders. The labyrinth of the mind. Huh. Sounds like my day so far. Really? You think you've got what it takes to solve these puzzles? That's not quite what I meant, Joy. Oh, well, what did you mean? I've got a bit of a mind bender of my own. Not another one. Ooh, I'm interested. Go ahead. Well, it's like this. I have a friend. Let's call him Travis. Travis, got it. He and I have been good friends for a while, but he's not a Christian, you know? So he's a bad influence? That's not exactly how it works, Kyle. Just listen. No, he's a good guy. He just doesn't know Jesus yet. Anyway, his grandma and he were really close, and last week she, you know... Died? Yeah. How's he dealing with it? Not well. He spends most of his days in his room crying. Aw, poor kid. Is there anything we can do? That's my problem. His mom asked me if I was able to go to the funeral with them and be there for him. You know, spend the day with him and stuff. That sounds like a nice thing to do. Yeah, but here's the thing. The funeral is on the same night as my church's laser tag and movie sleepover. Oh yeah, that's gonna be awesome! Yeah, that's where the problem is. I want to be there for my friend, but is that more important than a church event? You mean a movie and laser tag? There's going to be a Bible lesson in worship time. Whatever. Anyway, that's why I came by. I was hoping Mr. Jacobs could help me out. Yeah, well I'm sure he'll be back in a bit. Want to listen to the radio while we wait? Why not? So that's my problem, Mr. Jacobs. I really want to go to the event at church, but Travis's mom seemed to really think I'd be able to help. I see. I'm sorry to hear your friend is struggling with the loss of his grandma, Artie. It can really be hard when someone you love dies. 
Yeah, I feel bad about it, but realistically, what can I do about it? I can't bring her back or make him forget. I can't even say he'll see her again, because I don't know if she was a Christian, and I know he isn't. It'd just be weird. I don't think so. I know when my grandma died, it really helped to have people with me, even if they couldn't do anything about it and didn't know how to make me feel better. Joy has a point, Artie. In Romans 12, God tells us that one way we can show people we care about them is being sad when they are sad. Okay, but just because something's a good thing to do, does that mean that it's the only right choice, Mr. Jacobs? Hmm, well that's an interesting question, Kyle. I don't think skipping out on a friend that needs you so you can play the laser tag is the right choice, Kyle. Thank you, Joel. It's been made clear what you think about the subject. Now I'd like to hear what Mr. Jacobs has to say about it. All right, you two. Though I understand what Joy is saying, there are some times when both options are good ones. But in those times, I would say we need to look at our motivations. Motivations? It means why we want to do something, or not. Right. It's being honest and asking, why is this important to me? In the case of going to this youth event, do you want to go because it's going to be fun, or because it's going to be a way to learn about God? Hmm. Yeah. On the other hand, sometimes looking at why we don't want to do something can also help us figure things out. Like if we're telling ourselves that God wants us to do something, when in reality, it's just the easier choice. Interesting. Is that in the Bible? In quite a few places. In fact, I can think of one story about a man who... Well, you know, I've got a script about it. I'll be right back. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the inspired drama, The Lion's Lunch, an adapted biblical story about doing the right thing. Long ago, in the land of Israel, there was a prophet. Hello, I'm a prophet of the one true God. This prophet did what most prophets do. I listen to God and give his messages to the people. At the time of the story... There was a lion? Uh, yes. But y you don't show up for a while. Is this story very long? I'm a little hungry. Don't worry, it's not long. At the time of our story, the prophet of God got a message from God. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to the town of Bethel and tell the people that their altar to false gods will be destroyed. Pretty basic uh, prophet stiff. But this prophecy came with special instructions. Yeah, God said not to drink water or eat bread there. And oh, I'm not supposed to go back the way I came. Everything seemed to go smoothly at first. The prophet delivered his message, and the king invited him to dinner. Sorry, pal. God said I can't. I'll come to dinner. Not yet. <sighs> As the prophet left town, an older prophet rode up to him on a donkey. Hey, you. Aren't you the prophet everyone's been talking about? Everyone? Well, my sons, anyway. I hear you gave the old altar what for. <laughs> I say... Why don't you come to my house in town and have a meal with me? I wish I could, but God told me that I couldn't. I can't eat bread, drink water, or even go back the way I came. Hmm. Well, that would be a problem. But I wanted you to come over so bad. You know, all this talking about eating is making this lion really hungry. Okay, how about this? What if I told you that an angel told me that God says it's okay for you to come home and have dinner with me? Really? Sure. It will be great. And we've got all sorts of great food and drink. You'll love it. Well, if God said it's okay. Sure. Wonderful. What about me? The lion wasn't invited. I'm starting to think I'm not even in this story. The two prophets went back and had a lovely meal until the older prophet got a message from God. Uh-oh. What? What is it? So, God just told me something. And it's not good. What did he tell you? He says that you have disobeyed him by coming here and eating and drinking with me. You shouldn't be here. And now God says that when you die, you won't be buried with the rest of your family. That's awful. But you said that God told you it was okay. Well, I kind of made that up. You were lying? Lying? Not yet. After dinner, the older prophet saddled up his donkey and gave it to his guest. Thanks for everything, I guess. Yeah, sorry. As the prophet rode along, thinking about God's message to him, 
he didn't realize that stalking him was a big, ferocious, hungry lion. Roar! Take that! And that! No! No! Finally! Lunchtime! Actually, the lion didn't eat the prophet. Wait, what? Instead, the lion stood over the prophet as a sign of God's judgment. But I'm starving. Can't I have a little bite? Sorry. The Bible says that after the lion killed the prophet, the older prophet found him and brought him home. I am so sorry, my brother. I'll put you in my tomb with my family. You know, I'm pretty sure the Bible doesn't say anything about the lion not eating the narrator. <laughs> Uh, the moral is, when God gives us his instructions, he expects us to obey them. Sometimes people use clever words and promises to tempt us to change our minds, but God doesn't tell us to do one thing and then want us to do the opposite. He never changes. We need to make sure it's him that we listen to. Looking a little thoughtful there, Artie. Yeah, I guess I was just thinking about the story we read about the prophets and the lion. It was a pretty fun one. Roar! Yeah, but I don't remember learning about it in the Bible. Is that story really in there? 1 Kings chapter 13. Huh. This is going to be a harder choice than I thought. What do you mean? Well, Kyle, it's this whole problem with me going to church or the funeral for my friend's grandma. I know I would rather go to the church vent but mostly because I would be uncomfortable going to the funeral. Understandable. So I thought if I came here, I thought maybe you guys could help me figure out what I should do. And instead we get a story about a guy who gets taken out by a lion because he listened to someone who said they knew what God wanted. Oh, yeah. I can see how that would be a little worrying. Yeah, but I don't think that's what Mr. Jacobs was trying to say when he had us read that story. I think he was just telling us to be careful who we listen to when it comes to knowing what God wants. Joy's right. Just because Bible passages like 1 Timothy 4 tell us to be careful not to listen to people who don't speak the truth doesn't mean we shouldn't listen to anyone. Well, we know that, Mr. Jacobs, but how can we tell who's telling the truth? That's a big question, Kyle, with lots of answers. But I think that one of the best ways to tell if someone will be truthful is to see if they match up with what it says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. You're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Teacher's pet. She's right, though. And that leads us to the next place we can always turn if we want to know what God has told us. The Bible. Oh, right. I mean, you can't get better than God saying something and a person writing it down. I'd almost agree with you, Artie. But there's one other way that we can know what God wants us to do that I think a lot of us forget. Asking a pastor? Asking our parents? Good guesses. But I'd say the best person to ask is God. Now, that's pretty obvious. Well, it's true. But we have many, many examples in the Bible of people not knowing what to do asking God to help them make the right decision, and doing what he tells them to. I guess I should start there. Thanks, Mr. Jacobs. See you guys later. Bye. Okay, Mr. Jacobs, why didn't you just come right out and tell Artie what to do? It's obvious he needs to go with his friend and be there for him at the funeral. Well, Joy, I guess I figured it's a decision he needs to make on his own. Artie knows what the right thing is. I think he just wanted me to answer the question for him so he didn't have to think about it. Is that so bad? No, but I won't always be around to answer questions for you guys, so I'm telling you how to answer them yourselves. You're not moving, are you, Mr. Jacobs? <laughs> I don't believe so, Kyle. Oh, good. I don't want to think about you not being around for a long time. Me either. Could you do me a favor, Kyle? Sure. Want to turn off the radio? Uh, no problem. 